vadina kolegos, mes pradedam konferenciją, 28-ąją konferenciją. Na, kaip įprasta, kaip įprasta turėtų būti šioks toks trumpas įvadas ar pristatymas, bet manau, kad to nereikia, nes kada susitikdavom, kaip sakant, realiai ir realiu laiku, tai be abejo kitaip, na, o nuotolinės, nuotolinės formatas yra nuotolinės formatas ir e, tai e, yra šiek tiek galbūt sunkiau, tačiau, e, na, taip jau yra. E, labai tikėjomės, kad šitą konferenciją vyks jau įprastų būdu, e, pamenat, mes diskutavom ne taip senai, e, bet buvom, buvom lygiai apsitarę, kad, kad jau nebenukelsim ir dent laiką, o, o turėsim konferenciją įprastų aiškia, laikų pavasarį, tai yra e, balandžio mėnesį, na, ir taip jau sutapo, kad būtent paskutinės balandžio dienas, aiškia, ir, ir e, kad e, likti šitam pačiam formate. E, na, e, ko gero būtų buvę įmanoma, aišku, susitikti ir e, įprastų realiai, e, tačiau, kada tiek planavimo ir organizavimo reikia laiko ir sausio pradžioje, sausio mėnesį vasarį pradžioje dar nebuvo aišku, kaip čia bus su ta pandemija, nes žinote, mokyklose dar ir visokie pribojimai ir, 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 ir taip toliau, na dabar jau tie pribojimai lik ir, ir, ir jų kaip ir tokių ir nebėra, rytoj beros baigėsi, ne rytoj po rytno, na, kaip pirmos ekstremali situacija, na, bet ką darys, antrą kartą tenka susitikti online. Na ir uh, kolegė Rita kažkur kelyje pakeliu į kaimą ir į mišką, sakė, prisijungs iš miško, aš tiesą pasakęs nelabai uh, įsivaizduoju, uh, bet sakė, prisijungs, net irgi ten kažkokių netidėliotinų darbų, kaip visada. Uh, va, tai, tai tokia, toks, uh, toks dalykas. Nematau, Nematau mūsų žal, žinias laidos atstovų tradicinio nuo latinio, tai yra žal jo pasaulio redaktorius Augustas turėtų irgi prisijungti, galbūt prisijungs vėliau. Na ir dabar aš galbūt keletą žodžių pasakysiu užsienį, užsienyčiams mūsų svečiams. Kolegos, tik noriu pasakyti, kad ta, viskas turėtų vykti pagal programą. Uh, iškia, šiandien iki, iki trumpos pertraukus, iki trečios valandos plenarinai pranešimai, vėliau, vėliau reiškia, po trumpos pertraukos mes keliausim į darbą sekcijose, jūs gavot nuorodas, kas negavot dar kartą persiūsim, parašykite arba elektroninį paštų, nes yra įjungti visi čia paštai kitam kompiuterė, nes ne visus kažkodėjau, kai kurios elektroninius adresus tiesiog ignoruoja sistemą, nežinau kodėl. Tai iškiai taip yra, nes čia Vilniaus universiteto, mes per universitetą jungiamės, tai yra visokių pridėta apsaugų be proto daug. Ir iškiai ir, ir kai kurios adresus ignoruoja, nežinau, nepripažįsta, žinau, kad keli grįža, bet visi, kurie registravosi, visiems nuorodos buvo išsiūstas. Na, o šiaip laisvai labai platint nuorodų irgi nenorim, nes maža, kas prisižino, bet toks, tokia situacija, kad prisijungia visokie ir įvairius gali prisijungti ir taip toliau. Tai, Ir rytoj, rytinai, rytoj jau dieno seminarų, taip pat nuorada yra išsiūsta, kad dar ne, ar negavę ar kaip, tai irgi galėsit parašyti arba kažkaip, kažkaip pasidalinti šitą informaciją. Na ir, ir tie, ko daugiau visus kitus klausimus aptarsim vakare, apie trumpą aptarimą, kuriam skirsim šiek tiek laiko, na ir be abejo rytoj. Organizaciniai, kai iš kurie dalykai, ar kiti klausimai ir, ir, ir panašiai. Ir dar, Jeigu kilsi, labai tikrai būtų galima pateikti bent trumpai po keletą klausimų mūsų atsvečiams ir susienio dalyviams, tai parašykit klausimą tiesiog lietuvių kalbą, četę, reiškia, ir galima bus greitai išversti ir pasakyti. Uh, dear conference participants, it's a real big pleasure for me to see all of you with us. It's really nice and uh, not not uh, like previous year not like uh, last year but this uh, this year too and uh, this is already uh, as you maybe me- uh, checked uh, on our program is 28th conference uh, yeah and second that is taking place remotely uh, it's a pity of course that uh, it's not possible to meet face to face person in person in traditional mode 
but uh, despite that, it's also quite good possibility to 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 communicate and to discuss with you. Uh, it is to be hoped that uh, we will meet again next year, possible next year, uh, but in the usual way, like a real pilgrims. Uh, what is special? Uh, what is special uh, is that we have participants uh, from abroad, uh, as uh, previous conferences, uh, and these uh, uh, are great colleagues, great colleagues, uh, friends, and like-minded people. And we would like to see no pandemics, no pandemics at all next year, and great opportunity to meet somewhere in Lithuania. Uh, as you know, our conference has two main ideas. First, this is moving conference or traveling conference. Uh, we are moving from one place to another place every year. And uh, uh, it's a good possibility to, to know more about our own country, despite that the China is not so big. <laughs> but uh, there are a lot of unknown places yet. Uh, on behalf of um, organizing committee and uh, our center, Center Dogological Center, I would like to thank my colleagues uh, from abroad and uh, all other participants uh, for a meaningful time together, despite the distance. And as we see, distance uh, doesn't work and doesn't matter in this case. And uh, uh, I see Angela from South Africa, Durban, it's many, many kilometers, you know, <laughs> yeah, uh, and uh, I see Solange, it's nice to uh, to see Solange from San Paulo or Santandre at the moment, San Paulo, because your university, Federal University of AB ABC is located in Santo Andre. It's uh, like, yes, like San that's San close. Paolo. Yeah, close to San Paulo, yeah, I remember. And uh, another idea that uh, somehow we're connecting people, connecting continents, and we have uh, in this conference, it's very nice, uh, particularly very nice to see um, our colleagues from uh, Ukraine, Ludmila, once again, Slava Ukraine, uh, and uh, um, from Latin America, as I mentioned, Solange, uh, our neighbors, our traditional colleagues, brothers and sisters from Latvia. Hello, Andres. Hello, Rita. Hello, Sandra. Uh, yeah, and Poland, Poland, Malgorzata. Uh, she is not maybe Polish anymore, I hope, because she she is not decided by not. She didn't make final decision yet. Uh, one time in Czechia, in Pilsen, another time in Krakow. Please decide finally. <laughs> Are you Polish or Czech? That's a, a, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind, it's really it's good. Fun. And we see Martin Bilek, Martin from uh, Prague, from Center Olymp of Czech Republic. And it's, it's, um, it's good. And also, if I understand well, uh, our colleagues from Kazakhstan also joined our meeting today. Just a listener, you see, our geography is enlarging uh, every, every, every time. It's, it's really good. So, we have from Ukraine, Latvia, Czech Republic, South Africa, Brazil, Poland, Kazakhstan. Uh, it's maybe not national conference anymore. <laughs> but now, uh, this is an idea to keep it as national conference with international participation. This is comprom uh, not like compromise, yeah, compromise comprom solution. Uh, okay, and the time is running quite fast, and uh, I want to invite our first presenter, uh, Melgorzata Nodzinska Moran uh, from University of Krakow in Poland. And her presentation is related to non-formal science education in Krakow. Please, Mogorzata, it's your time. Um... Uh, good morning from Krakow. Uh, my presentation is, is a little mistake. It's not not formal at informal education uh, in uh, in Krakow. Uh, I prepare a lot of. Um, 
pictures and photos from Krakow. So I think that uh, uh, that uh, you can see how beautiful is Krakow. But I have a little problem with my with my computer. Wait a moment. Mm. Wow. Mm. Please share screen. I know, but uh, I don't see this this element in my in my computer. I see different pictures. Mm. On the right corner above. Yes, yes, I know, but um, I I want I know what I want to to um, um, present, but I don't see this in my in my in my computer. Uh, first, you need to open PowerPoint presentation. No, it isn't PowerPoint. It oh, is okay. it is Canva. So maybe it is a problem that I don't see this this presentation. Or maybe, maybe can we change order? For example, uh, Solange first and then. Um, okay, maybe maybe we change order. So I'm yeah. sorry. Mm -hmm. Solange, is it possible? Yes, sure. Uh, yes. Good. Solange. I don't know if I will have the same problem, but yes, let's try. <laughs> Okay, can you see me? Can I share the presentation? Yeah, please, please share and start to the, instead of Malgorzata, Malgorzata second, it will be second. Okay, can you see me? Yes, the presentation? Yeah, it's good, it's good. Okay, I'll put here, okay. Oh, yes, ready when you are. Can I start? Yes, please, please. Okay. Hey, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, because here is good morning and Labadiena for the Lithuanian people. Uh, my name is Solange. I've been working as a teacher and researcher at the Federal University of ABC, which is located in Sao Paulo. Today, I was not sure about something I've been fond of which refers to an ongoing research on this topic, the didactic approach of inquiry-based learning with the use of drawings, considerations and notes for future research. So let's get started. If you have some questions, please interrupt me and you can ask the question. Here is just to have an idea of the distance where I am right now. I am at Sao Paulo. It shows here 15 hours of flight, but uh, in fact, it's much more since we don't have direct flight. Well, and here on the right side, the university where I've worked on a beautiful sunny day. It is th this day was very, very beautiful. So uh, in this presentation, I'll bring you a clipping of a larger research that is in, actually in progress. Uh, I've been interested in understanding to what extent a metacognitive strategy, investigative classes with the use of drawings, images, favors the construction and reconstruction of learning in chemistry in the topic of metacognition. Uh, what are the limits, possibilities, and challenges to overcome? Uh, some principles of inquiry-based learning, just to, to have a context here. We have uh, <clears throat> five uh, principles, uh, I could say. One of them is engagement. I but think... Lange, so Lange, we didn't see your PowerPoint presentation, something... Oh, you can't see? 
No, maybe Malgorzata interrupted you. Yeah, please share, please share again. Sorry. Yes. Again, okay. Can you see now? Not yet, not yet. Oh, what's going on? Poland is fighting with Brazil. Uh, let me try something different. And now? No, not yet. So I have to stop here and try again. <laughs> Hi, Angela. Now I see you. <laughs> Hello, Salad. I'm going to try again. I'm talking about inquiry based learning. What we are going to. It's correct. It's correct. It's correct. It's okay. Okay. Now you can see. Yes. 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 Okay. So uh, the first one I'm showing here is engagement, student engagement for the task. As I was saying, I think is the, the this first step is very very important. The second one is problem. We have to have a problem, a question problem. Time for raising hypothesis. Students involved and trying to understand the question problem. Hypothesis, students plan how they will carry out the investigation, testing this hypothesis, obtaining new information. Interpretation and systematization, interpretation of new information they are gathering with the interaction between students in which scientific concepts are discussed and reconstruct. Communication, at this time is very important because the students will communicate their ideas, take notes of collective ideas and so on. Of course, it's not so just these five steps. It's just uh, briefly speaking, just to have an idea because I'm going to talk about this right now. So it's important to know about the, these steps. Some considerations about drawings to learn scientific concepts. This is, I think, it's very important. Knowledge science is mediated through scientific models, inaccessible to students. We know that. And uh, Answorth has a, pro, a, 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 a work, and she defends the use of drawings for learning in science, bringing some important points, which are drawing as a way to engage students in the process, as well as a way to learn to rep to represent to reason, to communicate in science, thus constituting an important strategy for science learning. In addition to the reasons mentioned and uh, which we agree with, we'd like to highlight the drawing as a possibility to, uh, to revise con concepts, to rethink, revise the concepts, what I call metacognition. So I think drawings can provide this, can allow this, and how can I use drawings to learn chemistry? This is a good question. Yes, okay, it's good, but how can I do that? Uh, here, as I said earlier, uh, it's a big research. It's just uh, uh, a chunk here. And I'll show you two examples that you can use in your classroom to teach chemistry. As I was talking to Martin, it's our passion, Martin, in chemistry. So here we have two examples, uh, so you can use it and you can fit in your context, wherever. It's very interesting. Using meta, meta visualization to revise an, ex, an explanatory model regarding a chemical reaction between ions. What is that? Here we have uh, a proposal. Students have to propose an explanatory model in the submicro for the chemical reaction between chloride, potassium chloride, and silver nitrate. And he had to, to, to tell me what's the initial, what do you think you see in the initial, and the final. And this, is, this was uh, just an, an example of a model 
proposed by students. You see here on left the beginning and the right the, the final in their perspective. So uh, now uh, what I do is to present them an image. This di diagram that you are seeing, I developed it my, uh, myself and presented it to the students as a possibility of representation. Look, it's a model, so it's a representation that can be made in many ways. This could be one of them. This step if is what we call meta-visual step because the students will see and compare. And so they will compare productions, identify similarities and difference. At this point, it's intended that she or he could revise it. So this is very important. They will see this representation and try to, to realize what's going wrong in their representation and so on. And this is before, uh, after, so after, before initial and after final. They saw the, the drawing and they reconstruct their learning. So what you are seeing in the right, left, right side is the final. So what we can see here, we, we have the second production, production of the students. The first is this one, the left. After the previous stage, a uh, meta-visual step can, um, we can see very concepts revised here, for example, the presence of water with previous was not represented. Now, the ions are dissociated here on right. However, the silver chloride precipitate still remains with the incorrect ion radio. So this already point, points us to possibilities, that's very good, but some limitations as well. The student is able to review some concepts, but not all. And this implies that uh, the mediation of teacher is absolutely important to do that. Here, the second example. The second <coughs> example, it's very interesting because um, it's a master's research in which Bruno, under my orientation, also researched in the teaching of chemistry in the topic of intermolecular interaction using inquiry based learning and drawings. This is was very amazing. This this work. Uh, we 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 talk to them to we work with, actually with two systems. The first of them, water and carbon tetrachloride, two colorless liquids and ask the students what would happen when mixed them. We did the meta-visual step explained earlier. And then in the part B, what would happen if we mixed, uh, if we added solid iodine in the mixture? Very interesting. This was the drawings they did in the beginning, what they, they think about their previous ideas. Here we have, uh, so they draw, they drew the, 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 their thinking, and after that we show this. And what is this? Uh, we presented this image to them, made by us, me and Bruno, so they could rethink about the, their own drawings. And then we did the same the step B. I'd like to highlight that these moments are very important. I mean, crucial. Why? Since they enable students to review their concepts and reform them in order to achieve a scientifically correct model. Of course, it's not easy, but step by step, you can do that. And the students see what you are present to them, rethink about their images that are stored here, and they can revise them and achieve the correct model. That's what it's our goal, actually. And the, the, the third example, it's a little bit different. I don't know if Carla is here in the, in the, the room. 
This, uh, why is different? Uh, it's part of a doctoral research that's being developed of with deaf students. Here we have Carla under my orientation and Juliana, who is preparing to start her master's degree. Uh, study, uh, this, uh, the topic of this study is the phenomenon of water evaporation. So we want to see what students think about uh, water when the water is, evaporate, is, is evaporating. Let's see. Here we have some moments and what you are seeing in the right is the drawing proposed by the students. Um, the first class actually it was about contextualization and water cycle and things like that. So elaboration of drawings. The first stop is what you are seeing right now. Then after um, Yes, the, the right is the, the first uh, drawing. Uh, look, that the proposed model by them is about microscope level. What's good, of course, but we want more. So what we, we did was, uh, after the drawing was done, they watched the simulation of water evaporation at the sub-micro level based on simulator. And I'm talking to, to it right now and then made in made the drawing again what you are seeing in on the right left right side note that they now consider the submicro level in their models it's very interesting and so they draw they drew once they saw this simulating to allow external views, and so they drew again. And now they consider the, the, the sub-micro level. That's very difficult because it's very uh, invisible for them. This simulator, you can find your you teachers, and this link is about uh, a virtual platform developed by University of Colorado. I think you, you may know about, about it and function as a virtual laboratory. It's very interesting. You have many, many possibilities to, to, to work with chemistry with this. And the, the good news is free, so you can access with no problems and use this simulator with your students. That's what it was, we did this in this work. Okay, and to, to finally, some considerations about this this research that is ongoing, actually, I just uh, show to you three examples that you could consider doing with your students. So what I realized was in all of them, uh, using this meta visual uh, strategy, you can have possibility for self-regulation of the cognitive process. This is very interesting because students can do it by themselves, allowing students revise their ideas regarding to mental models that are so important for us, science, science teachers, at the sub-micro level. For chemistry, specifically, this is very, very important. From the interaction of prior knowledge that they bring with them, chemical diagrams and discussions and reflections by the pair of students. Uh, I'd like to tell you that. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, I'd like to tell you that I will present uh, the continue of the, this research on Cape Town on July, and, and, and another um, examples. Well, the second consideration, the activity is in this format allows the student to make transitions between levels. That's what we want to to them to do. Being more preponderant, the transitions relate to the submicro, that we did, which is the, the most difficult, even being the one of greater abstraction. This is very interesting. They demonstrate problems at the symbolic level and use the macro in a reflexive way. That's a good thing. Metavisual um, activity contributes to the understanding of the representation 
level, since it allows an intensive metacognitive exercise of construction and reconstruction of scientific concepts. And so uh, this kind of uh, activity really contributes to, to better understanding. Implications for teaching chemistry, since teachers in training need to, to be prepared about these metavisual strategies strategies for future application in their classroom. Here we have some reference. You can uh, you can go to them. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge some some people, some um, research foundation that's FAPESP for the foundation of their research project, and my research group that's a research in science education and metacognition. We have uh, actually 16 people involved in this kind of uh, research. And of course, I'd like to thank you, Vincentas, and all of you, the audience here. And I'd say, Acho, thank you, Vincentas. Thank you, Angela. Rosal <laughs> Angela. Uh, for your presentation, it's really, really nice and, and important topic. Uh, uh, I, I do not see any questions in chat window. Um, possible? Some somebody wants to comment shortly. If not, if not, uh, let's let's go further. And the next presentation is by, by Malgarjata. Second trial. Oh. Hello, I think you see my presentation. Yes. Uh, yes, but... Huh? Okay. Uh, so... Mm. Uh, the topic is informal science education in Krakow, and, and it, will, it will be about beneficence. Uh, before I start discussing the results of my research, some information. Uh, the first definition, I would like to record the definition on, of informal education. I think we all know that informal education is a lifelong process. Uh, of sharpening attitudes, uh, uh, wallet skills and knowledge uh, based on various experience and the impact of the educational environment, uh, it means family, friends, works, play, markets, uh, uh, and uh, the impact of mass media, of course. Uh, uh, second, um, uh, second information is a few words about me. I'm a chemist, I work in Pedagogical University in Krakow, uh, but uh, but why do I want to talk about informal in, uh, education? Uh, it's informal education and not formal education. Uh, it's my hobby. Uh, I often conduct classes for children, adults, before pandemia, pandemic time. Uh, every week I have classes for children and uh, informal education. Uh, in photos, you can see me as a princess and me as a math uh, scientist. And the third information is about is about my town. Uh, as Vincenta say, I I live <laughs> between Praga, Plzeň, Krakow. But Krakow is my, I I was born in Krakow, uh, so uh, Krakow is the second capital of Poland. Uh, the third capital of Poland is Warsaw, and it is now capital, but Krakow was the second capital of Poland, it's a very old town. Uh, it has one of the oldest universities in this part of Europe. Uh, it, it is uh, Jagiellonian University, I study in this university. Nowadays Krakow has, uh, has over 40 universities, so, so we have a lot of universities in Krakow. Uh, and, um, 701,000 people live uh, in Krakow uh, with students. The students is um, approximately 40,000. Uh, so, mm, mm, because uh, in Krakow you have very many science museums, educational parks, 
and other possibilities for informal science education, uh, I decided to explore who use these opportunities and how often. Um, 1792 people took part in the study and asked questions about their participation in informal science education. Uh, it was uh, 491 women and uh, 302 men. Mm. Uh, as we can notice, the most numerous group participants in the research were people between 20 and 26 years of age. Uh, it means mm, that uh, the most numerous group participants in this research were people who finished high school and were in undergraduate studies. Uh, the most, uh, mm, the most uh, numerous group uh, of respondents studied exact at technical science. Uh, in my research, um, in my research, um, I asked a question: What attraction of informal science education do we have in Krakow, and how often, and whom are you said? Mm. Uh, the first scientific attraction is the Science and Art Festival. Uh, it takes place every May and at the, um, in the, at the main market square in Krakow. Uh, in the photo you can see the main market square. Uh, it uh, is the largest square in Krakow and the largest medieval market square in Europe. Uh, all universities in Krakow and many non-formal education institutions have their tents in the market square. Uh, there are also performances on stage, science performances on stage. Uh, in, uh, sorry. Uh, uh, in photo we can see in photo we can see our students uh, in of the legend about the Wawel dragon living in Krakow. So our students often prepare something in, in this in this in this festival. Seventy-third uh, percent of respondents have heard about the festival of science uh, and art in Krakow, but over forty of them didn't take part at, uh, in everyone's. Uh, it is it is uh, it is uh, amazing because um, because the main square uh, in Krakow is meeting place for inhabitants of Krakow. Apart from several museums, two chairs, and historic tenement houses, there are also many restaurants. There are also numbering attractions on the market. Krakowians uh, are used to free attractions on the market. Uh, for example. For example, Krakow Native Sense Competition, uh, for example, Lyconic uh, or Dragon Parade. Therefore, it is strange that 70% of Krakowians never mm, or very rarely prepared, uh, participate in the science festival in the main square. And the second, uh, the second uh, scientific attraction uh, is the Museum Night. It is one of the most popular cultural events. The event is about making museum, galleries, uh, cultural institution, and historic building available um, on the selected day during the night. Uh, that night, the organizers prepare unique attraction. For example, visiting usually. Uh, in exhibition facilities, concerts, workshopping, workshop attraction for children, etc. Uh, the, the ticket um, price is symbolic. It's only one slot, so it means it's very, it's very cheap. Uh, and uh, uh, we can see that uh, this event is well known to the inhabitants of Krakow. 95 at 6 percent of respondents have heard about the night museums, but over 40 percent of them didn't take didn't take part uh, in this event once. Uh, so, um, so it's big problem um, because Krakow has one of the richest museum collection in the Central Europe. Uh, these collections are very diverse. Everyone should find something interesting. 
you can see how many different types of museum uh, there are in Krakow. This part it's strange that Krakowians don't uh, take advantage uh, of the free offer during Museum Nights. Uh, the third uh, scientific attraction, uh, uh, the third setting attraction in Krakow is Małpolska Night of Scientists. It is a popular science event which has been coordinated by Małopolska province since uh, 2000, 2007. Uh, shows, workshops and laboratory demonstration, which each mm, year attract in increasing numbers of viewers. Scientists share their work experience and passion with contributing to the popularization uh, to the popularization of science and marking particip participants aware of the impact role of science and discoveries. They also present the roles of science in everyday life uh, and inquire young people to choose a research career. Participants may conduct spectacular experiments on their own, observe and name the labs of the pieces, it's count in everyday life. Uh, all attractions are free. Uh, in the photos um, we can see uh, scientists not in my university and my students which prepare, who prepare this attraction. Um, uh, also, the Science Night nice, uh, has a uh, 15 year tradition. Uh, only 64% of respondents have heard about the Scientific Night, and over um, 55 of respondents didn't take part in the event once. Um, the organizer, organizers of their website write Małopolska Poland Science Night. This slogan is known to every inhabitant of the region. And however, it isn't true. 45 of respondents, 45% uh, of respondents uh, have not heard about this action. On the other hand, uh, on, as the chart shows, the numbers of event participants is growing. Taking into account the numbers of inhabitants in Krakow, about 10% take part in this event. Uh, comparing uh, it to the results obtained by the event, it's turned out that there is a, a constant group of uh, people participate in this e event. Uh, the next attraction is Open Day. Every univers university, uh, every high school, uh, elementary school or even Tilgrim Garden has its Open Day. And they show the advantages of the facilities, but very often it is accompanied by demonstration uh, of effective natural experience, interesting workshop for visitors, lectures on event theatre performance. Uh, the photo shows the open day in my university, the chemical version of fire fairly tales about a princess, a chemical spa for children, and uh, painted with chemical for high school students. No, all attractions, uh, of course, are free. Mm. We can see that this event uh, is well known to the inhabitants of Krakow. 79% of respondents have heard about the university or school open day, but over 20 of them uh, didn't take part uh, on this event at once. Um, Almost all of the response heard about the open days, however, only about 20 of respondents take part uh, in it always and very often. Usually, the respondents are only interested in the open day of the institution they are going to attend. Um, we have many natural and science museums in Krakow. Um, uh, on this picture, you can see some of them. The next museums. Uh, in the night in in, country, uh, in Krakow, um, we have um, museums uh, uh, which collaborate with university, and a lot of university have the oldest university in Krakow. It's Mieniatologan University. 
we can see the center of natural education of the Jagiellonian University and next museums connected with Jagiellonian University. Uh, as you have seen, in, the Krakow, in Krakow we have many natural and science museums, but only 63% of respondents have heard about them and, and over 40% of respondents have and never been in them. So it is, it is, I don't understand this, why, why people don't go to the museums in Krakow. Uh, in Krakow you have, uh, of course, zoo. It's a medium-sized zoo. Uh, currently, is, it, it exhibition is over 1,400 animals, representing about 270 species endangered animals uh, constituted a large group of uh, two species. The zoo is located in the forest, uh, Volsky Forest. It's a beautiful forest park and it's in the large urban agglomeration. Uh, it is a favorite place to rest uh, for the inhabitants of Krakow, with numerous market walking tours, many of them around close the zoo. Uh, which is often a popular destination for walk walkness. There are bicycle roads, uh, an educa educational path in the forest walls. It is a place where there are several historical buildings, for example, in the uh, Mount of the Zephy, uh, as well Monastery and Hermitage of uh, Komedoli. Uh, the zoo uh, is most pop most pop most uh, of the natural attraction of Krakow. Ninety uh, ninety eight uh, percent of respondents have heard about the zoo in Krakow, but over ten of the respondents have never been in it. Uh, in Krakow, we have two technical roads. Uh, it's uh, the first is uh, Krakow technical. Technology trial. The second is Grzegorzewski Technology uh, trial. In the map, we can you can see places in this uh, in this uh, in this road. <coughs> mm -hmm. uh, it uh, um, it was um, in uh, it two. Um, uh, these roads are uh, in the center of the city, so it's uh, very. Mm, very fine that we can uh, see uh, very old buildings and technical buildings in, in our century. Uh, we can see the technical trials are not a popular attraction in Krakow. Uh, only 35 um, of respondents have heard about the technical trials in Krakow and over 50% of the respondents never walked them. So. It is in center of Krakow, but not if people don't uh, use it. Mm. Uh, next attraction uh, are natural monuments. Uh, in Krakow, we have uh, 358 natural monuments in Krakow, uh, and uh, uh, the most uh, the best now is the, the Avenue of Trees. Uh, it's heavy, heavily visited on the weekend. It leads to several attractions in Krakow, Kościuszko Mount, the Muse Museum of Waxpiger, the still historic center and others. Uh, and it is very, very popular place for walks. And uh, when we see uh, seven. 9% respondents have heard about the natural monuments in Krakow, but over 30% of the respondents cannot point any. So I think that people was going uh, in Avenue of Trees, but they don't know that it is that it is a uh, natural monument. Uh, in Krakow, we also have uh, Free na natural reserve in Krakow. It's Bielański Rocks, Ponarka, Maiden Rocks, Przegorzalski Rocks, and Skołczanka. 
As you can see, Krakow uh, is situated on the Kimstone Hills. So we can see it in the photo. Mm. 61% of, of respondents have heard about the natural reserve in Krakow, but over 40% of respondents cannot point any. Uh, in Krakow, you have very specific museum. The Museum of, of Multi-Civil Energy is unique because uh, it includes both the typical museum and the Garden of Experience. The Museum of Multiple Energy is locked in the historic hall in the oldest team depot, uh, depot in Krakow. Uh, it is unique complex on the European scale. Uh, the um, permanent collection consists of cars, motorbikes and trams. A temporary exhibition shows the fun of technology and science. A branch of the museum is the Garden of Experience, uh, on the area of over six hectares of the park, uh, there are, oh, sorry. Uh, two minutes left. Yes, of course, uh, uh, this information. Uh, so, um, so we have, um, you can see um, how many people know about this, uh, this museum. Uh, uh, it was also decided to include the media offered the internet and TV in the research, so very short I only show um, the results. <laughs> and, and, and what, what um, the end? As we can see, different forms on informal science education are used by people with different frequency. The, research tried to find the relationships between gender age level of education and its type and the preferred form of informal education. Only, only weak uh, correlation were found between the gender of the response and the frequency on participation in open school or university days, uh, but uh, in Poland mother as responsible for the education of the child, maybe is this the reason. Uh, the second uh, weak correlation is this, um, the age of the response of the frequency of visiting natural museums, the zoo, uh, walking along the technical logic trail, the order the most more often. For the most of the questions, a weak correlation was found with a level of education and the frequency participation in informal science education. The type of education don't have such a large impact on, on the use of informal science education in Krakow. Uh, so, research showed that despite uh, the rich offer of informal science education in Krakow, people don't take advantage of it. The higher of education of several people, the more often they use his offer. It can be said that informal education increases the education gap between people. Thank you for your attention, thank you. Thanks, Mogorzata. It's really nice. I, I like Krakow very much and I'm happy that I will have the possibility to visit it again after two years uh, in Charval. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, again, I do not see questions. Uh, please, please stop sharing your screen. Mm. Oh, I stopped. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay now. And uh, next, next presenter, Angela James from University of KwaZulu Natal in South Africa. Do we have Angela? Yeah, good morning. If I can, yeah, okay, I'm just finding my presentation. Thank you. Sharing it now. Can you see it? Oh, yes, we see it. Okay. 
Is it in presentation mode yet? Okay, there it is. Okay, thank you. So um, I want to say good morning to everybody and um, for the people that I know and the people that I'm still to meet, maybe next year, um, when we meet again um, face to face and um, yeah, it will be great for us to talk and, and um, actually just catch up on so much that we experience and probably still have to experience in life. So um, I'm, I'm really presenting on a program that we have developed um, for primary school teachers. And this particular program, um, obviously you can see that it's linked to STEAM. And um, in terms of the focus on the primary school teachers, a lot of the work that is presently being done focuses mainly on the high school learners and especially the exit level high school learners. And one can understand with regard to the um, examinations that take place at the exit level, one is always looking at well, what is the percentage pass rate and then schools are, are monitored and schools are then graded according to these particular pass rates. But anyway, so in terms of setting the scene, I'm going to start talking very fast now. Um, to, to start off with this program and to start looking at how should we go about developing a STEAM program, what, what we did and um, what I did, because I developed it uh, on my own and then I brought other people in afterwards and you'll see that just now. So I just did a Google search in, uh, and uh, put in the keywords and um, these are just three of the um, titles that came up with regard to STEAM in the South African context. So we know that um, a lot of the emphasis currently is on STEM, but we certainly need to move beyond that. Can I, can I start with, uh, just uh, I want to interrupt shortly. We do not see slides. I don't know why. Oh, oh, and uh, some people that's also strange. Make... Oh, yeah, yes, I can see. Oh, Gorzata, did you stop for your sharing because our screen is black and uh, we do not see? But. Solange said she can see. Can you see the screen, Solange? No, I can't see, Angela, unfortunately. Okay. That, it's that's all right. black here. <laughs> yeah. It's all black there. Oh, yeah, I can't see you. Okay. I can't see the screen. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, we know who says my Lord. <laughs> my Lord, for sure. <laughs> I can't okay. see even Vincentus, he disappeared as well. <laughs> oh, now I see your screen. Okay. Yes, you can see. <laughs> can you see my screen? Okay. Yes. yes. Yes, finally, yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Oh, my Lord. I was actually just going to go out of everything you see. Oh, my actually, Lord. Don't worry. Uh, don't worry. This is like previous year, the same experience is good. This uh, is tradition. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay doesn't matter okay that's um, all good yes okay yeah so so in terms can you see it now um can you see it in screen mode or can you see it in a uh, thing mode what mode are you seeing it in uh, uh please uh, turn uh, full mode yeah okay. yeah right yeah. yes thank you on my side it was showing and, and don't be nasty because i'm not a nasty person okay so setting the scene so we're still speaking about um, the fact that we, we need to move from STEM to STEAM. Can you hear me? Yes, yep. perfectly. Okay, thank you. So, so we really need to move from STEM to STEAM and, and this historical aspect of uh, restricting science to just the science, technology, engineering and maths really has to stop because the integration of arts, the A is, is in is essentially important. So the concern in the South African context is that um, if you look at it, there's only 5% of South African schools that, prov that provide art as a school leaving subject. So in other words, it is examined. And, and that, that is a particular problem because if you think about it, how do we look at our left and right brains and look at the creativity that we need to integrate into the work that we are doing? 
So if we're looking at the various um, science um, sectors in South Africa, the departments of science and technology, basic education or the department of basic education, higher education in South Africa, they've all come to realize that there are three things that we need to take into account. We've got to recognize the value and importance of STEAM education, we have to look at the fact that it's going to serve as a good boost for the socio-economic development in South Africa, and you can see why. And the third one is to, to look at today's students are obviously the future leaders. So we have to take into account 20, 21st century um, education and the importance of how that is paving the future. So with regard to this, there are policies and practices for the development and implementation of programs for the capacitation of citizens through STEAM education. And, and I think this is what we need to think about. So yes, there may be policies and the practices are minimal, but we need to look at how can we actually um, highlight this and really put it onto a, a larger platform. So when we're looking at STEM and STEAM, I think I'm talking to people who do understand this, but I'm just clarifying um, our particular standpoint and our, pers our perspective that we're working from um, is that they're both looking at scientific concepts. The process is engaged with as well. But when we're looking at STEAM, it really includes the creative processes. And it's not the end product, but it's the creative processes that our learners are engaged with all the time. And it's really about how the learners take risks in terms of the design that they are working with and in terms of the experiential learning because they're working in groups, there's a trial and error. But also what is important is that it works in context as well. Okay. Um, so when we're also looking at just STEAM itself and, and to elevate the, the importance of STEAM, it's the transdisciplinary approach. So it's not looking at specialization, whether it's only um, physical science or, or if, it's, if it's only chemistry or it's only biology. Can you hear me? Yes, it's okay. Yes, yes. Because yes. I heard someone talking, sorry. Um, so, so here it's transdisciplinary and I think that is so significant and, and notice art is the first thing that is mentioned, not even science or technology, it's the art. And it's also multifaceted and open-minded. And, and when we start thinking about this and, and the fact that our children, and when we look at the learning styles of children and the experiences of children, how do we integrate and how do we have inclusive education when we are mainstreamed on particular specializations and where learners who are so diverse in terms of their own thinking and their learning styles are excluded from the learning um, experience experience. So what we have to think about is that children cannot be achievers in, in maths and science and be creative when in actual fact they can be. And, and that's why we're saying we have to challenge the belief that we have streaming of children. Oh no, you're only a maths person. Oh no, you're only an arts person. That's not the case. And I can actually speak about that from the experience of my own son who has extremely high marks in maths and physical science, but he's also such a good artist. And now he's an architect. So, and then the learning in STEAM, um, should also start at a very early schooling, uh, early schooling um, years. And obviously that's a quote there that you can see that when we look at it, even the whole computing programming, etc., it's really to start at early exposure. So now you can understand why we were looking at the teachers in the intermediate phase. So when we also look at STEAM in the school, what we have to recognize, if it's transdisciplinary, then it's not linked to a particular teacher, but there's a community of teachers, but it's also the community inside the school and outside the school who are all going to be engaged in this. Because remember, it's problem solving, it's looking at the context, the way people live, etc. And very importantly, it's an integration of different groups of stakeholders where we're looking at different community organizations and how they can be involved in the enhancement and the progress of teachers and learners. 
So what we really need to recognize is that the teachers play a central role in this learner progress. So therefore, if, if we're going to have a program looking at STEAM and, and introducing STEAM into the schooling context, we have to look at the early, early years. We have to look at teachers that are teaching the early years. And we also have to recognize that if any professional development is going to take place, it has to start with teachers. So we therefore look at the particular aspects that need to be taken into account if we are introducing the STEAM. So it's a new concept for teachers and learners. And, and I can speak about this because we have already started working with the teachers last year and we midway with the teachers and I'll talk to what we're doing with them just now. But it's a new concept to teachers. Oh, art in science. No, you've got to be joking, you know. And if there is no teacher and, and we need teachers who have the spark who have the energy, who have the interest, and who have the knowledge and the skills in order for them to be able to use the equipment and introduce all the, all the technological processes. But very importantly, you know, we speak about ESD and, and we speak about um, the sustainable development goals, and we therefore also need to look at sustainable learning for life because that's essentially important. So our learners are not learning just to, for them to be able to get a, a, um, a particular career or whatever the case may be, but it's beyond all of that. And we need to think about the inquiry learning and that's come up so nicely in the two presentations that were, were presented just now. It's the inquiry learning and the problem solving that is so integrated. And Mar Margarita, I mean, I, 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 loved, I loved the fact that you raised the fact of the, the people in the community, Mar Margazata, sorry, that, that who are not appreciating what they have around them. So we have to think about how differently can we work with our communities. And what we are looking at is to achieve inspired teachers and learners who are knowledgeable and who can actually practice what it is that we have. So the planning with regard to all of this, what is it that we had to take into account? Firstly, intermediate teachers, grades four, five and six. We also looked at rural teachers, not urban teachers, because the rural teachers really do not have a lot of resources. And now we're looking at how we can enable them to work with the resources that they have in their particular context. And because within this, it says that we have to work with partners and stakeholders. So in this program, a whole lot of partners were invited. And then we looked at, so what could we be doing in this particular program? And you'll notice that there is the Science Center involved, there's the Eskom Expo for Young Scientists, um, there's the Center for the Advancement of Science and Maths, there's the Wildlife Society of South Africa. So there's really an integrated, holistic approach that has been worked with, because then we're looking at all the perspectives and how the learners can be engaged. The outcomes of the program, you can quite clearly see there are five. And the first one is really about the knowledge linked to the specializations that we're working with. But it's also the practice of STEAM in the particular context in those schools where it is actually happening. Um, and we're also looking at the role of STEAM education for advancing, transforming our communities, but also transforming the learning. Um, and we, we also looking at obviously our curriculum and how that curriculum needs to be implemented. But very, very significant is the co-construction because learners will be working with teachers, with stakeholders on what it is that they need to be working with and the problems in their particular areas and how they can be integrating the STEAM into that. So we called our program Journeying into STEAM. And you'll notice there's a particular nature, duration and time frame of the program. The program has three phases. The first phase is learning and sharing, and I'll explain that just now. The second one is classroom practice. And the third one is community focus. So you can see how we've integrated all the aspects of STEAM into this. The phase one is really about learning and sharing. So what is it? We, we invited the teachers. There were 36 teachers involved. We took eight teachers from the, sorry, 32 teachers, eight teachers from the four schools, eight times four, I can't do my maths now, 
four eights. Um, so we had those 32 teachers and we invited them to an Enviro Center. They arrived on a Friday afternoon. They were there the Friday, the whole Friday, the whole Saturday, and they departed on Sunday um, afternoon. And it was very important that we had these professional learning communities together because that's essentially what was happening. Um, and during that time, these are the various things that we were doing. So we looked at the inquiry-based teaching, we looked at um, robotics and coding um, without a computer because a lot of these teachers and the learners do not have computers, there's no electricity. So how do you teach robotics and coding without electricity? And here you can see is our full program that we had and we did this in October last year over three days and you can quite clearly see I mean the program was so interesting the teachers were so amazed I mean here we had campfire stories and marshmallow brides and reflection sessions so we work and we have fun with centers we do not just work and work but we have lots of fun as well and what we also have is sustainable living technologies. So we looked at what is a solar oven? How do we harvest water? Because in rural communities, if you're not having electricity, how can we then have some sort of cooking with a solar oven? And the teachers made solar ovens. They looked at how they could harvest um, rain water and then how they could filter that and purify it, etc. And there's so many other things. So I'm, I'm quite happy to send this uh, presentation and actually to, to talk to people about what was actually happening. So it wasn't only what's happening locally, but we also played a global game looking at the environmental impacts. And, and quite clearly, I mean, if we think about what is currently happening in, in Eastern Europe right now, um, we in South Africa are so concerned and, and we really, um, we really, um, yeah, I don't know what to say, but but it's such it's such a sorrowful and it's such a painful experience that so many people are going through, and we are also going through painful experiences with the intense floods that we have had within um, um, Durban, South Africa. So phase two is now on on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We are going to be at those schools, and we are now going to work with all the teachers, their learners the principals and the communities and notice that we're going to be doing lots of different things with them um, and we're going to be looking at now taking all these um, sustainable technologies and showing it to the learners engaging the learners in developing all of this so notice we started with professional development of teachers now we in the classrooms at the schools with the teachers the learners and the community members Okay, and here you can quite clearly see what is important is establishing science clubs. So at each of the four schools, we're going to establish science clubs. We have already just established the professional learning communities with the teachers when they were out over that weekend. And now the teachers are communicating with one another in terms of what they are actually doing. Um, and you can see here that what, what is really important, there's a sign show, we've spoken about sign shows, we've spoken about science expos to get the learners to investigate problems in their immediate environments and now to do an exhibition of how they went about doing it, why they did it and what did they actually find out with regard to all of that. Um, that's the basic program that we have and notice that here what we've also done for, for the school visits now, we've also included the high schools. And the reason as to why we've included the high schools now is because these learners um, from grade four, five, and six, the grade six learners are now going to go over and they're going to go into the high schools. And there needs to be some continuity with regard to what they were learning. And you can quite clearly see that we are running these processes quite parallel. And um, it's, it's really going to be so exciting when we're with them and working with them. And in terms of the last slide, the community focused experiences where we get our students to be working with the teachers and to be mentoring the learners 
and this we, we term service learning where the students will be working within those particular contexts of the schools themselves. Now I'm ending off with this particular slide and the reason as to why I'm ending off with this slide is because we, we've looked at the, the full program, we've looked at the outcomes, we looked at the fact that it has three phases and we are presently busy with second phase and I must say that the teachers are sending WhatsApp messages with the pictures or the drawings or the models of what the children have made. So when we go to the schools now during this, this week coming up, we are going to see so many of the different activities that have taken place. And you know, it just it just means that to go from STEM to STEAM just gives so much of a creative, holistic, integrated approach to more of a community-based problem-solving um, initiative. Thank you so much, everyone. I think I am done. Thanks, Angela. You finished on time. We have two minutes left, uh, maybe for some questions or comment. Um, uh, please stop sharing your screen. Yeah, I will. Uh, and uh, uh, my short question would be about, uh, you mentioned uh, that teacher, uh, teacher has a central role, and uh, but uh, on the other hand, we're talking about student-centered approach, student-centered teaching and learning. Can you shortly comment on this issue? Yes, absolutely. I mean, if you think about it, if the, if the teachers are in the program, the teachers now are the students in the program. So, so we I'm just... See, sorry, we do not see you. We want to see you. <laughs> you don't have to see me. I'm, I'm okay here. I'm, I'm trying to find a little corner in my sister's house where it's not noisy. I'm in Johannesburg at the moment. Anyway. Um, yeah, well, when the teachers are in the program, they are now students. So when we're saying student-based, obviously it's the teachers who are integrally involved in this particular process, and the teachers are learning about STEAM. And the teachers, if I have to show you the pictures, I think there's, there'll be another presentation where I share what, what was actually done with the teachers. Now it's just the plan of the program. But I will share, the teachers on that Saturday and Sunday, they didn't even want to leave to go home because I mean we are such fantastic people we kept them entertained we they were so excited they were learning so many different things and that's what they kept on saying we have never experienced this type of thing in our whole teaching career so it's important that for the professional learning we take the teachers out of the school context into a different environment where they experience um, and we at an enviro center, obviously there, there's so many different types of ecosystems that they experienced and for them it was the very, very first time. So the natural science teachers are always forgotten. We need to ensure that we work more fully and obviously the learning and the interest for science starts at the young age. If we're not doing that, we're missing the boat. Thank you. Okay. And uh, my next uh, second question, uh, because uh, my PhD thesis uh, oh, last last time ago uh, was connected with integrated teaching and learning, integrated science teaching, uh, integration, uh, integrated teaching and learning, uh, and currently we have uh, STEAM or STEM. Uh, do you see some maybe differences or, or something? Well, if, if, she, if, if the integrated is only STEM, then I do see a difference because the integrated should also involve the art. And the art, you know, if you look at the exhibitions and what the learners do with, with that art and the integration of art into science, it is absolutely phenomenal. So the models that they make, the types of experiences, I mean, if you're thinking of just accessing water and in a rural community where you don't have much access to water and what the learners do in order for them to access water, it's not just about the piping, but it's about the nature of the piping. It's about the types of material that we use and it's about the design of how we actually map it out. So there's a mapping experience that is taking place and it's really about how we model and they could be making that piping themselves from 
um, Coke bottles that you can cut both the top side and the bottom side and join them together. That's already a type of piping. But how could you then look at the increasing the flow of the water depending on where that piping is? So, you know, it's, it's all that that we then have to think about. And the problem solving then becomes absolutely phenomenal. Thank you. Thank you, Angela. It's, it would be nice to discuss in more details, but uh, our time as usual is limited. Uh, we should follow our time frame. And uh, next, uh, next presenter, uh, possible Martin, uh, because he agreed, uh, he agreed to, to 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 be with us without any interruption. Martin, please. Martin, do you hear me? Hello? Uh, do, you, do you listen to me? Do, do you listen to me? Uh, yes, now. Yeah, okay. Sorry, it was some, some, some problem with connection. But now I'm ready. <laughs> now I'm ready. Okay. And time, time yes. is for me now. Time yes. is for me. Yeah, this is oh, Okay, thank you. I will try to share my presentation. So. It's okay. Okay. Oh, no. Not okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not okay. <laughs> Was only only a few seconds. <laughs> so once again, it's a similar problem like Malgosha, maybe. So, share share screen window. Yeah, but it was. Uh, now. It's okay. Now it's okay. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Now it's past. Okay. It is. <laughs> it is. So so, I will I will try to make the next one. It's okay. Yes. Yeah. It's okay. It's working. It's working. So thank you, and good afternoon. Good afternoon, dear colleagues, dear friends. It's my great pleasure to be with you, after a relative long time. That I was very traditional uh, participant of. Uh, events uh, organized by Professor Lamanauskas, by uh, Vincentas. And for today, I prepared for you very traditional, my topics. It means computer-based experiment or computer-supported experiment, or as Vincentas proposed, computer-assisted experiments in teaching chemistry. But uh, discussion, previous discussion was about integrated science, about STEM, STEAM education, uh, but now I will be a little bit more in chemistry education, but uh, you will see that it is not only single chemistry, but the, our approach is also wide and it is including not only IT in chemistry, but uh, we can speak about some connection for different other subjects. Uh, I'm coming now uh, uh, from Prague, from Charles University, from Faculty of Education, where I'm working at the Department of Chemistry and Chemistry Education. It, it, so somebody is somebody is uh, speaking in the ground. No, it's okay. And I, I can continue with the dust, please. Uh, yeah, it's okay. Please continue. And I and nice colleagues uh, to, to... So, somebody is speaking somebody is speaking <laughs> Virginia is you get the Virginia is speaking Virginia Virginia please Virginia Virginia is you get the phone maybe maybe you can you can break uh, please continue uh, her, her micro microphone yeah. now it's okay okay yeah sorry <laughs> thank you thank you but uh, double double voices are not very good in online <laughs> in online presentation thank you so uh, about my presentation you know that i'm working in virtual communication a uh, long time especially in science and technology education and uh, my topics is uh, two 
find and to develop and to uh, increase the approaches how do ICT can support our science uh, education, especially in my case, uh, chemistry education. It means that ICT are supporting of uh, main cognition methods in in science and in chemistry. It means to support empirical cognition methods and uh, theoretical cognition methods. But I am not I am not very satisfied now with uh, with last wind in education. That speaking from uh, European Commission and also from our decision sphere about something like digital competence. But I am not very funny for this new competence that I think that we have the same competence like before. Uh, but digital devices, digital environment and uh, uh, digital instruments are only instruments which one supported, uh, which one prolonged uh, our competencies like communication, like learning to learn, like social competencies and so on. But uh, I'm a little bit skeptic that digital, digital competence is new competence, but I think it is very good, uh, very good approach how to make our traditional competence better and better. But uh, the approach is that uh, I'm working in, in uh, the area of different kind of supporting, especially experiment, like main methodolo methodological uh, instrument for chemistry education, for science education. And it means remote sensing, many sources we can find on the internet, on the uh, different uh, sources, and to elaborate uh, current data uh, from, for example, meteorological uh, institutions and, and different and different. It means remote sensing. Remote laboratory could be based on real experimentation, could be based on mediated experimenta uh, experimentation, could be based on both mediated and controlled experimentation. And also more and more, we have to think about virtual laboratory. And Solange presented here a very, very nice example from FET, uh, FET uh, server for set uh, a sample of a different kind of models and uh, simulations, models of processes for physics, chemistry, biology and water uh, connected disciplines. It means virtual ba laboratory based on video, based on animation, simulation and so on. But, but I am working in different co concepts how to support real experiment, in my case, real chemical experiment. It means to work with simulation, to work with data registration, to work with data processing and to work with regulation of the experiments. But this is very, very, very close to Angela as presented to STEM education, maybe with this aspect of arts, also STEAM education, that this is very close to our environment our uh, everyday life that we are uh, we are working in automatized world it means the sensor like one way from experiment from real world to digital devices and opposite way from digital devices to have some instruction to have some uh, regulations of the different devices and also our life is regulated some somehow so now I, I would like to show you some approaches. The first one will be really to support experimental activities with computer measuring system. It is my very, very long time uh, motivation that my uh, PhD dissertation was defended in 1996 with these topics, but uh, after 30 years, this development at the practical school activities are not so different from situation before. But yes, I have to say that it is not uh, simple work for teachers, but it is a little bit more work for teachers. And it means also some uh, little bit different situation for chemistry, like for physics, but physics uh, experiments from physics are very good reversible 
and they can repeat more and more experiments. But it, in chemistry, it is not so simple. But we have to. We are working with uh, uh, reactants. It means uh, uh, some substances which one are changing, but it is not. Uh, many times it's not possible to go at the start of these experiments, but we can start new experiments with new chemicals, with new substances, but it is complication for uh, these uh, approaches. Uh, but uh, I, I work it with a different system, but from my PhD uh, 30 years ago, it was CMS, a computer measuring system, but next was our Czech production ISIS and uh, Netherlands production IP coach and so on, so on. But now I'm concentrating uh, in using of Vernier system. Maybe you know it also in Lithuania or Latvia or other, other countries, but uh, it is product of U USA and we have very good dealers at, in our country, but they are uh, PhD absolvents at physics departments and they are working not very commercially, they are working very supportive for for teacher practice and for teachers as uh, users of, of these devices. But you know probably this approach, uh, how we can make from the computer uh, measuring device and we have the record of the data in different uh, regimes and different uh, modes maybe and uh, main are three modes it means record of the value of the measured item uh, in time intervals and the registration also in uh, depending one value from uh, other value and also what what is a very good contribution from chemistry it is also a little bit uh, slow, slowly measuring, slow uh, experiments. It means registration not in time intervals, how much as, as possible, but registration in some steps, in some uh, special situation when we need uh, this value of the of the item. But for your uh, imagination, uh, maybe somebody of you don't know the systems, but uh, for example, this example is uh, a registration of the value uh, by time intervals it it, me it means uh, temperature registration in time intervals but uh, i change it just just before my presentation this picture uh, based on presentation of solange but solange presented uh, some experiment about uh, water evaporation, but this experiment with using of temperature sensor is also about evaporation and you can see that it is measuring of evaporation from surface of the temperature sensors. Uh, it's uh, uh, some cooling of, of this surface uh, of and decretion of the temperature and you can see we can start for example with the red one uh, red one is uh, ethanol red one is ethanol and it is a very strong decretion of temperature and we can uh, make next step it means this blue one this is water and a little bit less recreation and uh, we can ask the students about hypothesis why the decretion is uh, less at the water in comparison with the ethanol and the hypothesis could be confined by for example boiling temperature and we can go go next for the acetone and acetone is the, the green one curve and we can falsificate this uh, first falsificate the first hypothesis and to prepare next hypothesis and so on so on. And for chemist here, you can see the red one, you can see the red one curve and the red one curve is glycerin. But what is this unsense, unsense, what means evaporation of glycerin when you know the, the liquid of glycerin, but it is a little bit it is a little bit cheating from the teacher and it is a little bit uh, pressing for for uh, thinking of the students 
what means when I would like to try evaporation and glycerin. But it is not evaporation, but it is hygroscopic um, properties of, of the glycerin. You probably, you know what, what I mean. So it is a registration in the first type, first mode in type interval. And we are using also this uh, dependence of changes between A and B item. For example, here is the dependence of changing conductivity uh, uh, natrium chloride solution uh, on the temperature. It is clear, but you need to do uh, two sensors uh, in in the same time uh, in using. It means temperature sensor and uh, conductivity sensor. And what I announced before, it means the step mode measurement. And step mode measurement we can distinguish in three types, in three possibilities. It means step by step, step mode uh, in one experiment, step mode in set of analyzed samples. Many times we are in chemistry compare different sample, different concentration, different uh, uh, boiling temperature, for example, and so on, so on. And also we can use these systems for set of experiment by steps. Ste one step could be one experiment in different condition. And also I have for you some examples and for chemist here we, uh, we can use uh, chemical titration. Uh, you know that this, this example is pH measurement when we are using strong acid with strong base and uh, very typical curve, we will uh, obtain very fast and uh, with very good presentation. And also we can compare different cores in this approach, for example, strong and quake acid, strong and quake uh, bases and so on and so on. And uh, next one, I announced it, uh, the single step mode measurement within of a set of examples, but uh, this is very, very funny project, which one was presented also in Czech TV uh, last time. It was uh, that uh, students are asking, please bring to school some samples from your kitchen and from your house and prepare from these samples some scale, acidity scale, by your opinion. And after this hypothesis that the subjective uh, scale is hypothesis, what is most acid and what is most opposite, but they can work with pH sensor and you can uh, objectivize uh, uh, their, their scale based on their experiences, on their knowledge. knowledge. But it is within sets set of examples, it means uh, comparison of samples. And also we can use the step mode uh, for set of experiments, set of experiments. You can see that I announced here that this is neutralization. It means reaction of an AOH uh, plus uh, uh, hydrochloric acid. And we can make different experiments with different stoichiometry of this neutralization. It means that we can start uh, to make, uh, to measure temperature only with one reactance. It means an HOH. It means that will be some temperature of the laboratory temperature. And next we can make uh, uh, the second point is that we can make experiment neutralization with, uh, for example, very, very uh, different molar a maze of one reactance and second reactance. And we will receive extreme, we will receive extreme, it means in point four, that stoichiometry of this chemical reaction is this extreme, that it is most amount of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, highest temperature, it means uh, heat, <laughs> most amount of heat is uh, obtained from this one-to-one -one comparison with uh, uh, substances at the beginning. So it is a different kind of uh, real experiment. And also we are working uh, from the 
other side, how to support uh, a, a chemistry experiment, chemistry education based on animation and simulation. And we are use the very nice uh, uh, simulation server from Thomas Greenbow at Iowa University, but uh, uh, this server was stopped last year. But now we are uh, mostly concentrated to pet Colorado as presented so, uh, Solange too. And I can show you some uh, scale uh, from real to virtual measuring that you can see that we can go step by step in pH measuring from really real measuring, uh, qualitative measuring of pH, uh, qualitative measuring of acidity, semi-quantitative, quantitative measuring in real experiment, quantitative measuring uh, with real experiments with computer support, it is in the middle. And next you, we can work, for example, with uh, remote experiment and also we can make really with model. It means uh, to be uh, in a whole in a virtual environment and one example for you, which one uh, we are working a few, maybe maybe 10 last year, 10 last year, we are working with one scenario that we are compare in the school, especially in Lover Secondary School, where we have uh, in Czech Republic chemistry and maybe your, your country too, that we are working with two scenarios, but these really scenarios in real experiment uh, before it was hand pH meter, but now we are working with uh, computer supported P pH uh, measuring, but in real experiment. And also the opposite model, opposite scenario is working with simulation. Uh, before it was this one, Thomas Greenbow simulation, and now we are working with simulation from, from PET server. And the research design is continuously the same identical variants of laboratory work with pH measuring, real and simulation. And we have three levels of uh, worksheets. The first level is uh, classical traditional measuring of selected solutions, different solution. Second level is uh, solving of problems with pH measuring uh, to state the hypothesis and to verificate or falsificate this hypothesis with this measuring of pH in real form or in virtual form. And third level is uh, to ask the students a little bit more about their creativity, about their motivation after this uh, two previous level. It means what uh, would you like to uh, make with real devices or what you like to make with this virtual equipment and so on. But I, I can show you also some results that we are working with pre and post test, knowledge test and also questionaries about preferency, how to order real and virtual er environment, what, what uh, have bigger effect to start with simulation and to continue with real measuring or opposite to start with real measuring and two minutes, two minutes, two minutes yeah I, I, I'm, I'm uh, approaching to the end that we are uh, working with uh, eighth grade uh, basic school elementary school students and we have uh, the classes with preferences with starting real and to continue with simulation or B simulation and next real and we are working with cross-organized laboratory work and so on and so on. And you can see what is setting. This one is setting for virtual. This one is setting for real laboratory work. And the scenario uh, is that simple pH measuring in three samples of selected chemistry. And uh, here we have the comparable result. It's not big differences between uh, working with real pH meter and uh, virtual pH meter. And the second scenario to work uh, with problem tasks, problem solving, but uh, for example, uh, this kind of task, how will pH of sodium hydroxide change when its volume increases? But it is really, really significantly better result in the virtual environment. And the third level uh, also 
uh, it's not very, very big preferences for real measuring. But finally, I, I have to say that uh, students are more concentrated for principles or problems tasks when they are working with virtual uh, environment. But it was a little bit changing in my uh, previous traditional mining that, that, that when they are working, if they are working with real measurement, it is more and more better for them. But, but I think that time is changing and changing, but the working with simulations could be uh, with bigger preferences, how to recognize principles, how to understand what I am uh, working, what is my activity. So, uh, I, I can skip the next results. I can thank you for your attention, uh, but uh, I am hoping that also in chemistry, not only in physics, will be used the computer more and more for supporting of experiment. And uh, I wish you the nice conference today and tomorrow and hopefully uh, next year we will have the possibility to meet face to face. Thank you for your attention. Achu, už de merci. I'm not sure that it is right phonetics. Thank you. Uh, Martin, uh, I, I, I forgot to say to Solange in in Portuguese language, obrigada. Obrigada. <laughs> in my oh, language. Oh, very nice. Obrigado, yeah. <laughs> Thank my you. language Not is sure. Dequi. 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 Dequi, yeah. Martin, for the presentation. It was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. And in African Thank language. Thank you, Flo. So much. But, but I, am, I'm, I, I have the opposite uh, opinion. I think the Dior was better. But it is not competition. It is not competition. <laughs> it is not competition. Yeah. Okay. Thank you once again. When uh, you have some question or when we have time, probably we don't have time. Uh, yeah, you... Our our boss is uh, is watching. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Please. You know, typical problem. But uh, I hope uh, 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 at least uh, next year we are planning to to have our next Baltic Sea Symposium, Baltic Sea yes. twenty twenty three. And let's hope that it will be in real mode and uh, it will be possibility to meet again. And next presenter uh, and last the session uh, by Dagnia and her colleagues from Latvia, please. Uh, hello, good afternoon. Uh, Labas Dienas. Labas Dienas. Do, yeah, do you see the presentation? Yes, they see it. Okay. So my name is Sandra Kalmin and I'll be speaking on behalf of our author's team. So um, as you can read in the slide, we will be speaking about the research, the study we did in our university concerning the prospective preschool teachers' views on STEM learning in grade nine and uh, about the principle of continuity. And, but before I start, I would really like to thank all the previous presenters for the really very nice, interesting and thought-provoking presentations. Uh, ours will be um, really a bit more probably science-oriented, like research. So, um, topicality. Um, why we decided to make our study is no doubt that uh, STEM is an important part of general education and it constitutes a necessary uh, people's knowledge and skills of the future society and especially since 2007 the uh, STEM um, education has grown significantly and a closer bond has been developed among the STEM disciplines, especially emphasizing the real life context. Uh, secondly, the teaching and learning process has to be organized in such a way that the child's development proceeds through successive stages of education and that learn is, uh, learning is harmonized according to the principle of continuity in its broadest sense. Uh, thirdly, 
positive experience in the field of STEM gained already in early childhood then serves as a basis for further meaningful STEM education. And children already in early childhood should be encouraged to observe different nature phenomena and to gain ideas about what is happening around, thus further developing their curiosity about the world and obtaining uh, the knowledge in STEM fields. Uh, not to cut their uh, internal uh, inquisitiveness, asking all those why questions. And we already heard in previous presentations how we can stimulate that. And lastly, uh, STEM education is a challenge for very young children, no doubt. And therefore, the teacher's task in this context is also to make a link between ordinary knowledge and knowledge about the real world and scientific knowledge between playing and learning at school. So learning through doing, exploring the world. And as you can see, uh, this continuity. So we start with preschool, we follow with school, then we come to university and then it goes on to lifelong learning. So uh, the aim of our study was um, to find out the views of prospective preschool teachers about STEM learning in grade nine students, because grade nine is when students have to take the national examinations. And thus also addressing the topical principle of continuity of education. Uh, for the study, we um, put forward two research questions, like first, what the preschool teacher's views are about STEM learning and how do they understand STEM learning in the context of grade nine. So speaking about our research design, so uh, we had divided the survey that we organized uh, into two blocks of questions. The first block was about uh, learning process and the B block about the cognitive interest. And you, we used a closed question, um, questions which were subordinated to our common basic question. How should grade nine students answer the given questions according to education provisions and national needs? And often they had to rely on their own uh, knowledge of their own former experience uh, being at school. So in the survey, we had included 21 close ended questions, which were assessed on the four point Likert scale and five open questions. Now, speaking about the sample. So uh, these were the first year students uh, at, of the University of Latvia, the ones who intend to become the preschool teachers. Um, probably the situation is similar in most of the represented countries here, that it's predominantly female pr profession and therefore also out of uh, those 259 participants, uh, only two were men. Uh, all these um, participants uh, were our part-time students, uh, not only from Riga, but also from the different uh, regional regions of Latvia, because our university has uh, regional branches. And as you can see, the average age, actually our respondents is 33 years, but the age bracket is from 19 to 57 years. 
and 30% of the respondents, uh, mainly older students, they um, already have work experience uh, with preschool uh, students. And to make the data more comparable, we therefore divided the respondents into three groups. Now, what about the findings? So, uh, the first finding was that uh, answers of prospective preschool teachers showed that they acknowledged inquiry skills, including the skill to analyze and to evaluate as important. Uh, they valued highly also the perseverance uh, in learning and not being afraid of difficulties. Uh, yeah, and these certainly are important in the process of learning STEM. Uh, the importance of STEM knowledge in the national development is valued at the highest. And uh, yeah, uh, which uh, points actually to the homogeneity of the views, and at the same time, also describes prospective teachers' good understanding of the new education curriculum of LATU, which has been introduced since 2020. And grade nine students are expected to develop interest in uh, exploration. And uh, that you can see in interest resulting from inquiry, uh, though meaning with it, uh, the performance in lessons. The relatively low values of standard deviations in these questions allow um, also actually indicate a rather big consensus of respondents. And exploration in the leisure time is evaluated the lowest, as you see, uh, medium to uh, 0.40. And respondents' distribution showed that 14% fully disagree, while 35% uh, rather disagree, which together constitutes almost half of the total number of respondents. Our second finding, um, in general, prospective preschool teachers considered the cognitive interest important. Besides, there are, as you see, there are no sharp differences among respondents' answers in this block of answers, which proves that the majority of respondents have similar views. Respondents' views differ uh, depending on the content of the question and STEM thematic field. Sky high school students' interest is anticipated about the question related to what is happening in the nature, like the smell of the air after the thunderstorm, because without delving into the requirements for grade nine, the question seems very simple. Equally high interest is foreseen if the question is connected with the purification of drinking water, which is important from the point of view of daily life and high cognitive interest is envisaged also about daily processes if they are connected with biology, chemistry or physics. However, much lower interest is in anticipated if the task is hmm, unfortunately connected with mathematics. No surprise, probably. Uh, our third finding uh, that the prospective teachers with greater in experience, so these were groups B and group C, 
uh, value higher cognitive activities in free time from school. They seem to better understand uh, learning outcomes in grade nine uh, that also include deep enough knowledge in biology, knowledge about human organism and about the use of modified organisms. Uh, group B has the highest conviction about the importance of STEM knowledge in the national development, where the dispersion of answers is, as you see, uh, really small. And our fourth finding, the correlation analysis showed that respondents who were aware of the importance of mathematics to solve problem tasks in science according to the level of requirements in grade nine saw a close relation between overcoming the difficulties, number 10, and the acquired skills, the skill to solve the problems, the skill to analyze, the skill to predict, as you can see in the table. And there is also a close relation between the understanding about the importance of STEM and perseverance, if you look at number eight, which is vitally necessary for every learner in the acquisition of science and mathematics. Definitely, there were other uh, question that we could uh, analyze, but this served as the basis for drawing the conclusion. And uh, there are actually several conclusions that we have uh, drawn. Uh, first of all, it has been established that the prospective preschool teachers considered cognitive interest and active inquiry-based learning as especially important in STEM education. Uh, the importance of STEM knowledge for the national development has been highly assessed, and respondents with more life experience have admitted it with greater certainty. Uh, our study allowed also stating that the prospective preschool teachers have actually a general idea about STEM learning in grade nine of the basic school. Uh, however, they have not assessed high enough the mathematical skills. And it is essential that our prospective uh, preschool teachers have noticed the connection between STEM learning and such important character features as perseverance and not avoiding difficulties. And three more conclusions. The present study gave us the possibility to understand better the teachers' needs that made us aware of the fact of improving the teacher education programs at the university and the work has already been started on that. The prospective preschool teachers uh, also need the idea about STEM learning in the next stage of education to develop a better successive link between preschool and further schooling, uh, thus making the children's learning easier. Uh, However, uh, our study uh, also had some limitations and therefore we have uh, decided to continue it. And then in future, in the context of continuity in education, we envisage focusing more on coordination of the teaching learning co uh, content and uh, separate stages of education. Um, if you I, if I caught your attention into this issue, you can also uh, read um, the publication where we have described the study in more detail. And uh, thank you very much for your attention and welcome to our university and hopefully 
seeing each other next time in uh, this conference. Thank you very much, uh, Sandra. It's a really uh, nice building, nice uh, university campus in, 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 in Riga, in Latvia. And uh, I just uh, can support your, your welcome that uh, in case of possibility, uh, really, it would be nice to visit this this university and this building, this campus in particular. Uh, thank you very much again, Sandra, Rita, Ines and Dagnia. Uh, all, all good team, strong Latvian team. It's very nice. It's very nice. Light Zivo Latvia, Light Zivo Latvia. Yeah, and uh, uh, all together, all together, and uh, all, all, I would say, normal, warm, and bright, smart people. Uh, I think you understand uh, my, my comment. Uh, and we should work every day continuously and so hard in order to keep our world in a normal mode. Uh, and uh, I, I think that at least uh, all, all presentations uh, uh, were, pre were given successfully according to our program. And possible you have some short comments, if you have some, uh, please, this is the time we have one additional minute. If not, if not, uh, I, I... Rita, you want to say something now? I have a comment. Please. Angela. Angela. Yes. So, so th thank you for, for the presentations. And I think what, what we need to recognize is that for natural sciences, there's such a diverse um, aspect. Well, there are so, so many diverse aspects that we need to take into consideration. And I think in order for us to grow the field, we together should be looking at what, what are the pertinent um, types of, not just fields, but pertinent types of uh, activities, um, I don't even want to say specializations because then it's like a tower that you're putting to it. But what, what, what are the particular types of things that young children really for the natural sciences should be so integrated and engaged with? And for me, I, I'm not sure to what extent are we looking at nature? and and the the real impact not the impact but the influence of nature and how our learners can also be in, enabled to enhance their own lives but also to look at the entrepreneurial aspects because sustainable development also thinks also includes economic it, in, it includes social it includes cultural. So to what extent are we really integrating all of that? And and the, the emphasis on the theory, yes, sure, we can have content, but the content on itself is something that will be the detriment to the growth of all our children that we have. So the whole aspect of play, um, investigation, inquiry-based, all of that, how do we enable our learners to be resilient, to have the confidence, to be able to be present and to just share and do the things trial and error without fear. Because I think that is what is killing a lot of our children, fear. Yes, and to be able to think critically and not to be allowed to be manipulated. Oh, yes, and uh, thank, uh, thanks uh, to Angela so much. And uh, I just on chat uh, uh, put uh, a link to IST organization and you will see uh, IST statement uh, about situation in Ukraine because SV, SV science and technology educators uh, and this organization, IST, International Organization for Science and Technology Education was established was launched uh, during the cold war last century 
in order to to keep let's say to to combine all the efforts uh, uh, related to science and technology during this cold war period uh, to share science knowledge science ideas and and uh, uh, etc and um, it's a bit of course that uh, again uh, it was needed to, to 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 put this statement and at least it's official official statement by all IST organization in Aula, and I hope that all participants support this. Um, uh, I think Andres wanted to ask because uh, hand was raised, Andres, uh, or not? Uh, with the centers, just a few words and my okay. best, best wishes to all of you. These were very excellent reports today. It's, it was really top level, I think, also of international conferences for the whole world. You were great today. That's all what I would like to mention today. And I hope that next year, maybe, we will come again together, all alive beings, not virtual beings and something like that. <laughs> it was very interesting today, uh, especially Martin. Martin told about uh, virtual and so on, so on, different life. Uh, let's be very careful. Don't develop robotics, robots within education. Education, this is life experience for life, for alive beings, for life. But now we are going very fast towards very, very interesting changes all around us but let's be very careful don't become robots thank you once again very much it was really my pleasure and all the best in this year and i hope that really all these terrible problems with ukraine will end thank you very much Bye. Uh, uh, thank you, Andres. And uh, uh, okay, I officially should finish this um, uh, session. And we have some minutes delay, and uh, I think it's not a big problem to postpone five or ten minutes of our first uh, next next meeting. Uh, now we have uh, three um, ten approximately uh, and nine. Uh, let's uh, uh, start again uh, three twenty five, for example. Uh, for the second se uh, session on this on the same channel, and uh, I want to remind you that uh, in the beginning we will have three present three international presentations, uh, one from Ukraine and two from South uh, Africa, and next we continue with our presentations. And uh, first session will start uh, on the on another channel, uh, and uh, let's say 320, and we are 325. A little bit shift uh, between between two two channels. Uh, thank you very much again. Uh, keep well, keep safe, uh, healthy, uh, and let's hope because hope is the most important thing. Let's hope that everything will be solved and everything will be okay. See you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you.